I taught at uh, Eric Babb's place. We did Eric Babb's version of Template 4, and we taught him how to build out a Template 4, left-hand version of Knife Template 4 of his preferences based on Aikido. Right? That's the idea. Like, ah, uh, Eric Babb has his own thing. Like, I have my own kata in some systems because a part of me becoming an instructor was you submitted a kata and a bunkai, and you had guidelines, and then you became a living part of that system by becoming a part of its history. And so that's what this is. That's like template five is the Kempo Karate influences of speed, um, of speed, okay? There's three ways to get the speed. First is rebounding. Second is directional speed. Third is biomechanical reaction, which I'm not gonna do because it's gonna hurt somebody. I'm gonna beat the shit out of them to show it. And then you can blend it. But here's the idea. If I was to show you this core movement, you might say, hey, that looks like something. I'm not gonna use anything in my hands. Tell me what this looks like. What does that look like to you? I said, I plugged all the targets. I'll do it again, right? What does that look like to you? Right? There's template five. But if you scale all the, if you take all the sauce off of it, all the flavor, and you make it a bare bones mechanic, you have the seven loop combat loop, right? And that came after template five. That was Ray's interpretation of Pan and Tukin that he threw on a thing. What's that? What's that? Well, with a blade, it's like, look, here's the thing. Ray got famous on YouTube with a 12 cuts in a second and a half. I was able, I was able to beat that at mono. I've seen Ray do 22. I can run anywhere from 18 to 20 based on the day. Like, so these principles allow you to overclock that stuff. As a monong, what I expect from my guys, if they're able to do template five, is they should at minimum, with, without constricting the type of speed they're getting, be able to hit 12 and a half cuts in, no, 12, set, 12 cuts in a second and a half. And it's very easy if you already have the grounding and you have the, the understanding. So at its core, here's the three ways we look at the speed. One, and I'm using a short blade because that's how it's taught to me. It was actually taught with finger blade. Um, one is uh, rebounding speed, which is essentially this, like... You know, rebounding speed would be if I did this kind of motion. Quadruple count. Why quadruple count? Because when I cut, you know, I'm using the ricochet effect. Okay, it's one base motion. Yeah, but together, it's four cuts. Okay, so what happens is I'm using the body to ricochet to overclock. If I wanted to get a line like this, um, that's biomechanical, it'd be, okay, so I just got three cuts with ricochets, right? Directional speed is this. I can use lines and I can go one, two, three, and cut a box, four, or I can go one, and a circle can hit multiple targets at once. That's directional speed. Depends on the direction I'm coming from. That's why footwork's so dangerous, why it worked the way it just did for the acceleration. If I do this with no footwork and I stand toe to toe with somebody, that's one cut. If I stand on an angle, and I do the footwork that I just showed you, that's one, two, three cuts in one move. Because now I'm standing on an angle, I plowed the line and cut three things because the way I lined it up directionally. That's why this stuff works the way it works. It's why we never enter in on a straight line because you're, you're isolated to one movement. So when you're off lining, you're actually able to plow an entire line and hit hand, head with both this and this. Right, so you're just getting like nine shots. You're just cleaving everything, lining it up, and then pa, the guillotine. Okay, and then we have biomechanical, which is that essentially if, um, let's say we're here just to give it as an example. If I wanted to cut Chris um, fast, I could come in like this and then tap his hand over and see how I pass his hand over the blade. So maybe instead of me going ba 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 bam like an explosion, when I cut, I make him pass himself over the blade. Maybe what I do is instead of me coming through here and then digging this line, boom, when I retract that line, I make a circle on the way out. I make a circle on the way in and I pull out on a drag line. And so because of that, what happens is when I hit, he sinks a little bit. So when he sinks, he runs into the blade. And then now when I push this way, he turns that way, which gives me this cut. So I'm only actually doing a motion like this, kind of like your reverse triangle, cut your reverse T. If I do that, then the body turns up and that comes forward and that comes forward, right? So doing this reverse T, I didn't have to plow three lines. I just did this and went in. That's our three ways of speed, right? Um, there's more to speed than that. Speed is really a, a, a horse of a different color. 
I think there's about five ways I think I use my speed, which is like prediction, which is basically reading the, the probability, which we learn a lot in Spotadaga. Um, I, have a, I have a person who started their first day and they're doing amazing at it. But guess what they also do almost at a professional level? They're a goaltender for hockey. So they're actually already thinking about being in the middle and watching someone's weapon move and where the, or their stick move and where the puck's going to be. That's what a spotted dog is. It's like, that's what I say. It's about thinking past success. You can stab somebody. And if I don't understand biomechanical reaction, and let's say that I win and I poke Chris here, he doesn't have to do shit. But once I push him, he's going to stab me. That's thinking past the success. But if you're already having to predict things in a manner ahead of time, you already knew that because you knew where you'd put yourself based on what's possible, not on what's going to actually happen. So that's the first part of speed. The second part of speed, you know, there's three phases of it. And then there's what happens after the fact, which is also speed, you know, so there's a lot of shit to it. Like there's a lot of ways to, to pull speed is what I'm getting at. This is kind of the way that we catalog it in the system for these preferences for Ray. That's his thing. He wants percussion. He wants um, directional speed and he wants um, biomechanical feedback based on moving, moving a person as his preferences, right? So here's the targets. Okay, it's gonna be cuts. One, two, three, four, five, subclavian, six, when I tap this, it goes over, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I don't know if they can see my head though. Okay. They can see the body. That's right. Okay, so here's the core. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so come forward a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so here's the targets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so what you're looking at is the Panantukan loop. That's the core. Okay, what changes it is now the methodology. This is two cuts initially because when I come in and I come up, I cut a V, directional speed. I draw a circle, I can get four cuts. Here I'm drawing a semicircle. Okay, but it's reversed. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, when I think this, now I'm going into biomechanical speed. When I pull this out, I tap him on the chin, it turns his neck into it. So I retrieve this up, his neck passes over the blade. I drag cut, I go to the iliac and to the brachial. So there's my, re my percussive speed. Now once I tag here and I go into the other subclavian, I tag this with a directional cut, circle in. And when I pull out, I cut through. That's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So uh, I don't even want to. I'm just going to go slow, but I'm going to kind of accelerate with it. Um, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, like that. I don't really, it's kind of hard to possibly get. So, so if I want to isolate components of it, okay, that was different because instead of the ricochet effect, I went through, then tapped this hand over the blade. I tapped, tapped, shot through, right? These are ways I can vary the speed, okay, this way. And, you know, yeah, exactly. It's like you, when you speed up, you can't, when you start going faster with this, you have to like accept a certain amount of like you're going to mess the person up. Because that's basically what we're looking at. Let me oh, do. So you know, like, you were on cuts where? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the cuts happen on those targets, and the targets that's are happening. The secondary edge yes. is for right. It's so that secondary that. edge is there. So if you want to isolate this into a into a into just a basic pattern, it's here. You tap. You just add in from this point. Tap the chin. Drag. Shooting through in here. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, so, six is the next, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now you can get it different ways. I could, I could um, use repercussion into circles. Okay, so there it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you wanna get crazy with it, it's just, that's how you're cataloging the speed. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, Good. Seven, tap my chin. Eight is going to be the cut here. Nine, ten, bop, bop. And then when you're, you rebound off that instead of sinking it. So nine, ten, 
then you're going to go 11, 12, or you could do 11, 12, 13. Yeah. So 11, There's multiple 12. ways to do it. That's your 11, 12. And then the release is there. Yeah. 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 So like, um, so I'll use a long blade so you can kind of see a little bit better. It's, you know, a little ridiculous, but you'll see. One, two, three, four. On this, okay, here's a line. Boom, boom. Okay, so I could just go in this way, but I can get an extra cut. If I'm already going there, I might as well have the palm up. There's a semicircle. Because what I'm doing is basically a nonlinear. One, two. It's a redondo. That's literally what it is. Redondo, right? I'm just going redondo. Same, same line I'm following. One, two. Now, when I release this, I'm coming straight up in a line. When I tap your chin, that runs that. So when I come like this, I squunch, oops, sorry, and I tap. Once I hit that, you're cutting here. I plow the line this way. Now, distance is speed in this respect. If I come all the way back here, I get a lot of power from a whip, but I don't necessarily, I get acceleration. I don't get speed. Those are different. Like I can make this thing go 80 miles an hour this way and make it, you know, go through a concrete, but this is going to be arriving a little bit earlier. Okay. So when I'm here, my hand's already coming out to my Pentagon. Here's your 100, ready? So there it is. One, two. There it is, literally. One, two, redondo. One, two, redondo. One, two, redondo. Right? That's that's straight out of curriculum. That's well, it's not in the curriculum anymore, but that's the hundred, right? That's why I say it's the acceleration shit. But if you didn't have the grounding, you would do it the stupid way and get knocked out. So we're here. One, two, three, four, five, six, tap, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then you can go through this way too right the speed isn't the point the speed is like it's cool to be fast but fast doesn't solve problems it creates other problems so being fast is good for some things but a lot of it is you can overclock how fast you can physically go with ground you can move faster than you were ever imagined barring component of it one two good there it is boom now be ready with that check hand if you already know that you're coming through here see how i use my sidestep when i stand straight toe to toe when i do this body mechanic i have to like I have to generate distance. One, pull through two. But if I use my basic sidestep, see how I brought my hand to my feet? Just watch my toes. Straight, one, two, just like nunchucks. One, two. But I meet the line. That's what keeps that line short. I stuff the distance, and that creates actually my ground to dribble off the body. Sewing machine, ice pick, whatever you want to call it. Ba, 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 ba. There it is. Now here, you get a little, little, pivot when you're dragging that pivot is what loads your hand in the right position too so from the weapon drives the footwork and then your hands already in the right place it takes care of itself here yeah just right. like with the balloon right there there it's perfect see level two we're like it's like yeah it's level <laughs> two shit it is literally the the thing we started with the mary poppins thing if you let the weapon like generate the footwork you're always going to be fast as hell and in perfect structure but if you got to line yourself up with your feet and then swing but work is the most important thing, you know, but also like once you understand what the angles do, it's just everybody's for the most part that I see is sub they're level zero. They're not level one. Once you understand that you get offline and you always apply a turn or a takeoff off that line, you have a license to hit people with a baseball bat whenever you want. And they can't do shit about it because you're always in zone in all ranges at once and out of the way from that reality, that basic principle springs these things but if you try to do this before you understand that principle you're just going to be violently open <laughs> like it's like it's like all of that shit isn't going to matter if a dude just goes bah you know like there it's actually in the form this move the wheel like the name of that technique is the wheel the, the cog in the wheel is designed for people doing that shit so it doesn't matter how fast they're going it's like a, a wheel spinning a thousand miles an hour structure beats speed you know what I mean? Like, I just got to go, Ugh, you know, and it's over. But if he's got foot, footwork, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. Always offline, always offline, always offline, right? That translates to always footwork, always footwork, always footwork. If you're offline, then you actually have the ability to swing with reckless abandon. This is reckless abandon at a high level. This is like the, what's in, the most interesting man in the world's version of reckless abandon. And he's just being scientific with it because he's bored abilities that you can interact with it's an interface so that's, why that's what a template is correct yeah so there's different ways so one way that ray will do it sometimes now renee tongson was big on this in the philippines his idea with this was uh, is valid as well so um 
and this is Ray's version of his take on Renee Thompson stuff, but if Renee Thompson will chop, so his idea is that if I, if I do a line and I cut, the check hand isn't necessarily for framing. The check hand for him is a hit because if I cut a line here and then I chop the line, the cut will burst open. So basically he's like doing this. And then if you cut somebody here and then yeah. punch them in the chest, you'll rip the cut open. Mm. That's how he's doing it, right? Gnarly. Yeah, so that would be the same idea of biomechanical, but rather than me running you over the blade, right. I'm opening you with the hand. Dang. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. and it's only limited to your life experience. That's why you get to know people. And then Renee shows you that and you're like, GT, you know, GM shows you that and you're like, now I got a whole nother way to somebody up with this idea, right? So yeah, like yeah. so I, all I would do if I wanted to, to invoke the, the will of Renee Thompson's blade work is I would follow the same track where I was constantly hitting these things, chop, you know, that this check might not go here. It might go there to go here, to go there, to go here, to go there, to go here. I'm not checking you anymore to do that, to run you over the blade. Now, when I cut you, I'm checking you to chop, to open up your neck more. So when I cut, that's where my, that checking point comes into so I can bust those open. Woo. Now, if you're looking more like the c -lock guys at Train Ray, they'll hold their blade in the spoon position like this. And a part of holding it as the drag cut is now it comes into these kind of whipping motions. But when you cut somebody like this, you dig a ditch and it doesn't close correctly. So if I had this blade here and I was using more c -lock, now if I wanted to use Bahati's version of that, I would do is change the blade geometry to show his preferences and follow the same line. And now when I'm plowing through, I'm just creating these, you know, and the thing about this, when Ray taught it to me, the first time he taught me c -lock version. So the C-Lot version has these whips. So this one here was actually kidney. So see how I come around the back, this whip on the spoon grip, because he taught it with a, um, a ring knife. This, you know, that allows me to come around and hit the kidney. The biomechanical feedback that happens when I hit the kidney as his head comes back, uh, boop, and then my next lines become faster, right? So that's just using it based on Bahati's, you know, preferences. Renee Thompson, I'm just going to chop the biomechanical feedback. I'll follow the lines, reciprocating lines. More like Rumpy Dog, because Renee Thompson is a, G, is a master of uh, uh, modern Arnese. So it's kind of a blade interpretation, the same body mechanic. If I wanted to go more tempo karate, then I'd pull more of those, you know, these lines for template five. If I wanted to go more wushu, I could go more directional cuts with it, and I just hit all my marks by using directional speed. And then, you know, based on how, you know, you want to blend it that's where you can start to apply a lot of these principles that's the idea that's why i don't tell people like oh do you want this terminal what is this what is it's like dude it's like this is it's literally whatever you want to land on points what's your preference you know you're just looking at within this there's the re the rebounding there's the the directional stuff and then you have the biomechanical stuff where you just push here and he goes there and runs into the blade and when you blend those two ideas together you start to get something special, you know, and then you can start to blend preferences from different masters together. And then you can, you can use your own personal craziness to take it to a place they have no imagination for, which is the next level of evolution. Cause these guys are from a different time. My kids will come up with shit that I've never heard of.